Hey, what is up guys, it's your boy Twa here. My greatest regret and frustration, I had two hours of podcast regarding the buffs of the new characters. Had few of these A220 mains telling me how broken their character has just become. Unfortunately, OBS decided to say, let's corrupt this file and let's not work with this. Better yet, I probably took about 12 takes to make this because once again the audio was bugged. Welcome to my new apartment! Yay! Let's get it popping! Too long didn't reversion on the patch. Let's go. First and foremost, public service announcement for returning players. Look at this rule book. Look at what you're getting. Look back to me. Look at what you're getting. Are you amazed? I don't even know, but the Soulstone ticket and the option four tickets of the Dark Legion. Uh, you can get practically anything that you want from here. So I would honestly say if you decide or if you're thinking about coming back to the game, this will be the time to do so. Five star unique weapon ticket that you're still going to get. Make sure to get the goodies. All right. So let's start with Jane. The S1 just received an extra damage buff. Whether this is the most amazing thing ever, I don't quite know. As for the S2, however, getting an extra 25% magical damage increase by this a layer of text is also good. This has already been tested by James Ray, which is probably one of the only attack James left in the game. And he said it's 20% off of this 25. As for the S3, usually you have the stunning perk and CC immunity perk but now it is built inside of the skill and you get something extra for it. Because the S3 Dark now dispels negative effects of all allies. On a 12 or 13 second cooldown makes it the lowest cooldown of dispels. From a tank at least. So that is pretty neat. As for the S4, granting yourself more magical defense. 10k doesn't sound a whole lot, but it could allow you to survive against some people. Against maybe Galgoria, but I don't think it will matter much. As for the later part, saying that deals magical damage 5% of maximum HP to nearby enemies every second. So, uh, it, 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 she's basically another chase. When she dies, she deals damage to you. <laughs> I'm not sure how much this is going to be, but I'm not interested on, on how this is going to perform. But this is not all, ladies and gentlemen. The S4 perk has something as well. Open activation dispels positive effects of all enemies. Uh, will this be the return of Suicide Janes? Where you could just run in, get killed, stun, and dispel at the same time so you don't have to worry about Baldwins anymore that open up with their S3 straight away. But if people are good and know their bows, know their strategies, they can hold off onto the S3 and still not get dispelled and do it afterwards. So there are many applications to this, but I'm not quite sure which one is the right one. But let's move to the unique weapon. Now you get yourself non-hero damage. And this has been a tendency to all these heroes that got buffed. I hope they do the same thing to Philip at some point. But 6% extra non-hero damage, if you get it to a 5 star, it will become 15%. And her soul weapon is probably one of the greatest ones in terms of PvP because usually it was if you get hit, you get your soul weapon. Now you deal damage and you get your soul weapon, which means up on PvP, pop the S2, S3, and within 10 seconds you will have your soul weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, that is in PvP. She will probably have the fastest soul weapon that I know of outside of maybe Lucique. That stuff is broken. As for the rest, too long didn't read. Instead of getting 80% magical damage increase, it is supposed to be a 100, which is pretty good. But now to my greatest excitement, and I, uh, I swear, uh, I'm still excited after doing this for seven or eight takes because Scarlet received such a humongous buff. Let's just talk about whatever this is. So the first thing, the normal attack now doesn't hit one character, but multiple. And will deal damage equal to 20% of normal attack damage. But, but this pops a huge question in my head. Normal attacks have 10% chance of dealing additional physical damage to the target and inflicting stun one second. Uh, we're going to test this right here, right now. Because with this thing, you get the activation chance to 20%. Uh, can you stun lock things? Can she then be used in PvE? 
So let's just look at this for a hot second. All I want to see is a lot of things and that is proccing that 20%. But from the looks of it, the AOE stun does not work. So unfortunately, the UT doesn't really give me anything super fancy. So unfortunately, this also doesn't stack the S4. But to just show off, Galeri costume, thank you Linkus, uh, will receive just major looks. This is what the skill currently looks like. What is this AOE? Oh, this guy added. And uh, what does it do? 4 seconds, attack increase, 25%, crit chance increase uh, for your allies. And that's not all. You get defense penetration and all block reduction. Uh, wait. So you'll be able to increase yourself and decrease the enemy? Uh, this could work very well with my Gladi. So once again, big ass AOE, and now you get another addition, and that is HP healed equal to 30% of the damage dealt, and the target takes extra physical damage. Funny thing is, you can see the stacks, and that actually increases the physical damage as well, so she is a great amper, and for what I can tell, a great teammate to have overall. The S2 hasn't really changed Changed up from 18 seconds to 50 seconds of cooldown and there's a neat addition to this. The S3 however now got turned into one big stun bonanza without a perk and looks like this. The changes to the attacks have been humongous, the AOE seems ridiculous but there's another change. Whenever you're using a soul weapon the S2 changes and guess what you get attack speed reduction. You get all critical resistance by allies. It doesn't say that it is dispellable or not, but on top of everything, you get a four second stun like this. Hand <laughs> damn. This is sick. But just a note the S3 also reduced in cooldown from 22 seconds to 17. Mana cost reduced from four to three, which means spam ability goes up. But the S4 received another big addition. Normally you have 150 critical resistance, it now becomes 300 for free. And there's another thing, normal attack skill grants Spirit of Orvelia. And if you attack 30 times, you get a buff, which is CC immunity, damage reduction up to 350. And on top of it all, you get defense penetration by it from the unique weapon up to 500 on a five star. And all you gotta do is either auto attack or pop a skill. Auto attacks get one stack, skills get 10 stacks. Which means that if you pop three of your skills, you get yourself CC immunity. That is broken. That is really, really broken. But that is not all, because the S3 will destroy shields. But let me say that again each head destroys the target shield. So you have multiple applications. Your Lucicio, who has an irremovable shield, gets destroyed. Your Evan shields get destroyed. This is monstrous for PvP, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, let me get this straight. And the S4, at the beginning of each battle, gains 50 stacks Spirit of Arvelia. So uh, you do uh, Soul Spring Water Scarlet. You pop the S2. You blow things up. And after five more hits, I'm getting CC immunity. Now, now, let me tell you guys, that seems mad broken. The unique treasure also decreases the cooldown of the skill, making sure that it is like an 11 or 12 second cooldown. But, as for the soul weapon changes, very simple, duration increase, cooldown reduction on the skills, which means it's easier to get her back into the CC immunity. I, can, I can only see how great this lady is gonna become. Uh, I'm looking forward to this and I will be building her ladies and gentlemen don't get it wrong don't get it twisted But let's move on to the last character which is Yuri and I have Zaya which is a to 20 Yuri I mean tell me that is absolutely broken. I've even seen footage of her doing Ocelon and see her blast two times Blow the whole boss up in one go take away from usually her epis a to 20 all of her buffs as such and just out damage an epis like that. I was I was baffled. It was insane. So I don't know much about Yuria to tell you guys what the changes really are. I will post some links into the description of uh, both 
the J main and the Yuria main to see and show you guys how great these characters have become. But here's the thing. All damage is dealt as ignore defense. Great. Uh, additional magical damage that ignores defense to hero target. Defense ignore skill. Lots of extra damage. S2, grant yourself 30% extra attack. Mind-blowing. The S3, 250 additional defense penetration. Sure, let's get all of that for free. The S2, however, reduces the shield by 50%, but becomes irremovable. PvP! Because if you keep your shield, you will be able to do a lot of damage. As to the S4, targets take more increased damage. Sure, I'll take that too. Not quite sure about the T5 Dark. I've had Zaya tell me something about it, and I completely forgot, but she said... There's not enough room for using more perks because they're not good. As for the unique weapon, instead of getting 50 mana upon every use, you now get a thousand mana, which means one full mana bar on every single skill that you do. Great. Soul weapon changed from five charges to six, but then reduced the skill activation requirements by five seconds. What? Okay, so you can pop it multiple times? I don't quite know. As for the advancement two dispels negative effects from self and gain blessing of foresight upon use. Sure, it sounds broken, it probably will be, but let's move on to the next part, and that is nasty costumes. Look at these ladies looking absolutely hot as hell. Ooh, scandalous. -y. The only downside is it gives two times the XP boost and one times gold boost. I was hoping, because it says swimsuit, that it was 3% gold boost. It is not. But there are some surprises that I was unaware of, and that is March 29th, which is next week. Guild War will be opened. The rewards will be a little bit more, ranging up from 5k to 2k if you're an absolute baddie. And you now can get Soulstone Fragment tickets from the shop for 2k each, four times every week. But now, within the special shop, if you go to the all of one summon, there is something extra. And that is... Pity systems. So if you get Nathan's hot dogs, you can still get yourself a random soulstone ticket on your 10th pull and on your 20th pull, you can get a soulstone ticket. Now, for all you baddie eaters out there, there is another event that basically says if you can get one of these guaranteed rewards, so on your every 10th and every 20th pull, you can get another all at one special summon. Uh, so if you get 20, can you get three soul stones and then get another? Well, do the math yourself, like I don't even know. That is a lot of rubies. As for the bug fixes, I won't be going over all of them except for one, Rip Kybera and his Eclipse capabilities. He was super interesting, but I'll probably won't be able to use him anymore after this patch. So that basically concludes the video. There's something coming up which is very interesting. I had several people talk to me about what could be added into the King's Raid 2 remastered version and talking about gameplay, certain game modes, and that will be added within one of my next videos. Put down into the comments what you guys think about this patch. Let me know. If you guys haven't already, make sure to like and sub, and I'll see you guys in the next one.